Once a powerhouse within General Motors, Pontiac carved out a niche for itself with exciting and innovative vehicles. But what happens when a brand loses its way and keeps making bad choices? Starting off my list is the 1971-1977 Pontiac Ventura, a shadow of its muscle car ancestors. A wheezing 250 cubic inch V8 offered sluggish performance, struggling to justify its thirsty nature. The boxy, uninspired design mirrored a forgotten appliance and failed to capture the essence of a true muscle car. While the $2,800 price tag might seem tempting, it couldn't overcome the lackluster performance and forgettable design, contributing to Pontiac's sad decline. 14. The 1973-1977 Pontiac Aster. This economy car, which was basically a rebadged Chevrolet Vega, was notorious for rust problems that could turn it into a dust cloud. Under the hood, a weak 1.9-liter I-4 engine wheezed like a sick kitten, offering little power and underwhelming fuel efficiency. The bland subcompact design was just like its lackluster performance, failing to turn heads. While the $2,500 price tag was budget-friendly, the Astra inherited the Vega's shortcomings, ultimately failing to carve out a niche for itself and tarnishing Pontiac's reputation. 13. The 1980-1984 Pontiac Phoenix attempted a fiery rebirth, aiming to rise from the ashes of the underwhelming Aster. Available engines, likely a 2.5-liter I-4 and possibly a 3.0-liter V6, offered modest power at best. The weird exterior design lacked the pizzazz of Pontiac's earlier muscle cars. An ex-body GM car, the Phoenix, along with the Chevrolet Citation, Buick Skylark, and the Oldsmobile Omega, was plagued with recalls and issues all its short life. Priced around $5,000 to $7,000, the Phoenix wasn't a terrible deal for the era, but it failed to ignite excitement. In a crowded marketplace of more compelling options, the Phoenix struggled to find its place, ultimately succumbing to mediocrity. 12. The 1982-1988 Pontiac Sunbird aimed for a sweet spot between sporty and affordable, but landed with a thud. While offering a choice of engines, like a 1.8-liter I-4 or a potentially turbocharged version, excitement remained grounded. Performance lagged behind competitors leaving driving enthusiasts wanting more. The bland exterior design failed to capture the imagination, resembling a tinier, less exciting version of its fellow Pontiac offerings. Starting around $6,000, the Sunbird wasn't overpriced, but it lacked the necessary punch to compete effectively. More disappointment. 11. The 1981-1987 Pontiac T-1000 While searches might bring up parts listings and forums, there's no conclusive evidence of a mass-produced car. However, some sources suggest Pontiac might have offered a sporty coupe under the T-1000 name during that period. Details are scarce, but rumors point to a possible 1.6-liter engine, which, while reliable, wouldn't have delivered the thrilling performance expected from a car with such a powerful name. The sleek design, hinted at in some sources, might have been a saving grace, but without the muscle under the hood, the T-1000 would have likely been a forgettable competitor in a market filled with exciting options. This potential mismatch between a sporty design and a pedestrian engine could be a reason the T-1000 never gained traction. 10. Is the 1984-1988 Pontiac Fiero, a unique gamble for Pontiac. This mid-engine two-seater aimed to be a budget-friendly sports car. A 2.8-liter V6 offered decent power, but early models were cursed by electrical woes. The futuristic wedge-shaped design turned heads, but the plastic body panels felt cheap. While praised for its handling and innovative layout, the Fiero's early reliability issues and quirky maintenance needs due to the mid-engine placement really messed with its reputation. Although later models addressed some concerns, the Fiero never quite quite lived up to its potential, becoming a footnote in Pontiac's history. At number 9, the 1999-2005 Pontiac Grand Am tried to recapture some muscle car spirit with a range of engines, including a 3.4-liter V6 offering up to 185 horsepower. Sounds impressive, right? Apparently, that wasn't enough. Starting around $16,000 at the time, it was priced satisfactorily. However, critics panned the bland, forgettable design as a generic mid-sized sedan. While praised for its comfortable ride and practicality, the Grand Am lacked the driving excitement and innovation that once defined Pontiac. This safe but uninspiring choice failed to connect with enthusiasts. 8. The 1988 to 1993 Pontiac Le Mans was a case of mistaken identity. Why, you ask? This car wasn't a true Pontiac, but a rebadged version of the Chevrolet Lumina. Under the hood, you'd likely find a range of GM engines, with a possible 
3.1 liter V6, offering decent but uninspiring power. Starting around $9,000, it was a really affordable choice, but very much forgettable. Critics pointed out the generic design, nearly indistinguishable from its Chevy counterpart. While the Le Mans offered a comfortable ride and decent interior space, it lacked a Pontiac spirit of excitement and performance. This reliance on borrowing from Chevrolet diluted the Pontiac brand and did little to win over customers seeking a distinctive car. 7. Then, the 1995-2005 Pontiac Sunfire attempted to capture the youthful spirit of a bygone era. Starting around $12,000, it offered a sporty and affordable coupe option. Under the hood, a variety of engines were available, including a base 2.2-liter i4 with decent pep but not much muscle. Later models sported a more powerful 2.4-liter i4 but never quite achieved the thrill of a true performance car. The Sunfire's exterior design leaned towards sleek with a curvy body and rounded headlights. However, critics found the plastic construction to feel cheap and the overall design aged less than gracefully over the years. The interior offered a basic setup with cloth upholstery. While comfortable for everyday commutes, reviewers pointed out the use of low-quality materials that detracted from the sporty feel. So the Sunfire wasn't a powerhouse, and its budget-conscious interior wasn't exactly luxurious. Yet it remained a popular choice for its affordability, responsive handling, and decent fuel economy. Ultimately, the Sunfire's lack of true performance punch and reliance on budget-friendly materials couldn't compete with more well-rounded options. At number 6, I have a 2000 to 2000 2005 Bonneville. It attempted to recapture Pontiac's full-size glory days, starting around $18,000. A 3.8-liter V6 provided decent power, with a supercharged version offering a sportier option. While the muscular exterior design was initially praised, it became dated over time. On top of that, the base V6 felt underwhelming for such a large car, and overall, the Bonneville failed to compete with more refined and powerful rivals. 5. The 2000-2005 Pontiac Aztec, a unique crossover SUV with a divisive reputation, started around $21,000. It offered a single-engine option, a 3.4-liter V6 with decent but not thrilling horsepower, available in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive, the Aztec boasted a spacious interior with a maximum cargo capacity of 173 cubic feet. People heavily criticized the Aztec's exterior design, finding its bulky, cladding, and unusual proportions unattractive. However, its functionality was praised by some. For example, a removable rear storage compartment and built-in cooler offered features not commonly found on competitors. Ultimately, the Aztec's unconventional looks and lack of refinement overshadowed its practical strengths, leading to its demise in 2005. 5. Four. Then the 2005 to 2009 Pontiac Montana SV6, offered in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive configurations, attempted to compete in the crowded minivan segment. Starting around $24,000, it boasted a 3.5-liter V6 engine, generating around 200 horsepower, providing decent power for hauling passengers and cargo. With a maximum cargo capacity of 162 cubic feet and seating for up to seven, the Montana SV6 offered a practical option for families. However, the Montana SV6 faced criticism for its uninspired design, a common theme for later Pontiac offerings. Sadly, yet another bummer from Pontiac. 3. The 2005 to 2010 Pontiac G6, a mid size sedan starting around $18,000, offered both fuel efficient 2.4 liter I 4 and powerful 3.5 liter V6 engines. Praised for its stylish exterior and comfortable ride, some criticized the interior materials as cheap, while the sportier GT trim offered a fun manual shift option, handling fell short of true sports car territory. Facing tough competition and Pontiac's decline, the G6 sputtered out in 2010. Two. Next, I found the 2005-2009 Pontiac Torrent, a compact SUV starting around $20,000 offered both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. A single 3.5-liter V6 engine provided adequate power, but wasn't class-leading. While boasting a spacious interior and a comfortable ride, critics found the Torrent's boxy design bland and its handling uninspired. Fuel economy wasn't a strong suit either, with estimates around 18 miles per gallon city and 25 miles per gallon highway for four-wheel drive models. These factors, coupled with Pontiac's overall decline, led to the Torrent's discontinuation in 2009. One and last on my list is a 2009 Pontiac G3, a short-lived hatchback priced around $14,335, which was essentially a rebranded Chevrolet Aveo. A single 1.6-liter I-4 engine offered meager power and underwhelming fuel economy. While boasting a standard six-speaker stereo and decent cargo space, critics found 
the G3's design boring and its interior materials lacking in quality. Facing competition for more established options and signaling the end for Pontiac, the G3 was discontinued after just one year. What do you think were Pontiac's biggest mistakes? Did any of these cars surprise you? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into automotive history. Thanks for tuning in.